Not bad. <laughs> Jack Hammer. Uh, now. Hi, my. Sorry, that was very weird. I was just looking over there. The, the game that's on at the moment is Fighting Fury for the PS2 that was graciously given to me uh, by uh, Dave Clark, uh, Dave I'm a Game Geek. And uh, yeah, it looks horseshit. But hi, my name's Dave. I'm also known as Infective Flidge. Bit of a cold open there, but um, yeah. Um, I thought I'd uh, say hello to everybody. Uh, I've got a cup of tea, you know, get your cups of teas ready. Ah, have a little belch, it's always good. Mm. And um, yeah, I, 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 I haven't got much in the ways of pickups, but what I have got, one of which I found in bowls over again, um, one of which was just a complete and utter surprise, uh, and another one, um, well, I've only got four things to show you, but so I thought I'd, I'd basically talk about those, what I've got, and uh, I thought I'd do a video response at the same time. Um, Jesus Christ, that game looks horrendous. I keep seeing it, because <laughs> I've got my screen up on my camcorder, and it keeps catching my eye, and it it looks horrific. It, it does. We are going to play that at one point, so... Uh, ugh. Anyway, I hope you're all enjoying the uh, the videos with me, Gruss, and uh, Soulfunk Retro. We are getting towards the end of those now, so there's only like a couple or so left, and then that's it. That's it for them for now, so I uh, hope you've been enjoying those. So they, they, they were a lot of fun, actually, to put back together once we'd done it, so it was interesting, to say the least. Um, but yeah, just to get back to topic... Um, I'll show you what I found. This came, this, this one in my hand right now, I'm waving around which you can't see, um, came from the Chernobyl um, children's charity shop that I mentioned before. It's in a place called Clown. It is actually called Clown. And um, one of the great things I like about this box, right? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'll tell you what the game is. It's called Beach Spikers Virtua Beach Volleyball. That's what it's called, okay? Now, it's for the GameCube. It's only, only for GameCube. Now, one of the things I like about this this particular cover, um, it um, it kind of highlights the uh, the uh, the nature of the sport, if you like, and uh, it does it in a very very mature fashion. And I, I think uh, as soon as I saw it, I thought that looks very good. That cover, I think I'll buy it. Tits and a woman jumping. Tits and a woman jumping. That is the cover. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's free plus. This is it's free plus. That is that's horrific, isn't it? So sexist. But sixteen teams of seriously fit girls, each one customizable. So on the back, you've got you've got that kind of thing going off as well. The box is bad, but I mean, it's so unashamed, isn't it? Ugh. You know, it, anyway, so that, don't know anything about it, is it any good? Let me know. Interesting one. So that's the first one. Now, this came in the post quite randomly, and it came from Horatio Van Basten. And, mate, thank you. I, 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 I haven't messaged you because I thought I'd do this video, because sometimes in text you don't kind of get across that you're like, wow, thank you, you know. It just magically came a day last week. I was feeling a bit bit low last week. I think you could tell with the video I did last week. I was a bit bit on, on a bit of a lull. I don't know why. And I got this and it cheered me up. And he actually got me. He said, this is a spare. He says, just a few, some bits I had lying around that I thought you'd appreciate. I don't know your stance on backups, but most people like to try before they, they buy. So you've got a kind of an idea. After you said you weren't that familiar with Dread, I knew exactly where to send the other item. Enjoy. Cheers, Sean. So... Sean, thank you, mate. I've actually started reading it, but um, it's about the Dark Judges, this one. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's interesting, to say the least. I I had no... I, I, I had it in my mind that Judge Dredd was like a, an ex-copper. I don't... I'm sorry, not Judge Dredd, sorry. Um, Judge Death. I thought Judge Death was actually an ex-copper that, that turned into it. I don't know. 
But I'm reading it and I'm enjoying it quite a lot and it's 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 a brilliant little book so far. So I am gonna I'm gonna pour into that and give it a good read because I'm going on holiday soon anyway, so I'll read it then so I'll save it for that. So thank you, mate. I'm gonna say I really thank you for that. That's that's made my day. And uh, also as well, he, he gave me this and it's uh, backup Neo Geo C D games, so actual copies. So and there's some good ones in here that you've got um Metal, Metal Slug 1 and 2, yeah, uh, Nam 1975, and Big Tournament Golf, don't know that one, but thank you mate, I've, I've, I was blown away by it, and thank you so much, thank you, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to play them, and if I like them, as he says, I might buy them properly, you know, but Metal Slug is not cheap, is it? <laughs> Right, this next one, uh, as you've probably seen by the title of this video, I heart Balls Over. I fucking love Balls Over. It's a great place. Just to, I went into that weird charity shop where I got uh, Decap Attack and uh, and uh, what was the other one? What was the other one? I forgot what the other one was. Oh, uh, it was um, Banjo Kazooie. That was it. So I went in again today. I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go and have a look now. I don't care if this has cost me over the odds to have. I don't really care at all. I think the fact that they charge me 25 quid for this in a charity shop and it's going to a good place with the money, I'm keeping it. Because I've always, I've always, I remember playing this with my cousin. I think everybody, everybody at one point has played this game either on a Mega Drive or a Super Nintendo. I played this on the Super Nintendo and I wanted it ever since. So... Fully boxed and complete. There you go. Super Bomberman. Yeah, 25 quid. I, I've probably paid over the odds for it. I probably have. But I'm, I'm chuffed with that. Absolutely chuffed because it's boxed. It's in really good nick. It's, you know, you know, it's still got the inlay. Cartridge is absolutely immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. You know, you know, stickers fine, absolutely bob on, and it's also got. I mean, they're a bit, it's a bit dog-eared, but instructions as well. So I'm dead chuffed with that. I'm not selling it; it's mine. I'm keeping it. So yeah, I've got a boxed copy of Star Wing and a boxed copy of Super Bomberman. So those were two games I played a lot as a kid uh, with my cousin. Uh, this one really wanted. They also had there, and I was gonna buy it, but I thought for a cartridge is that a lot? They had Super Metroid. Cartridge was 30 quid. Now, comments below, or talk to me personally, was that a lot for Super Metroid? Because I've no idea. I've no idea. I saw it and I just thought, A, am I ever gonna get round to sitting down and playing it all? And was that a good price for that game, just as a cartridge on its own? It was actually immaculate, the cartridge itself. But balls over. Don't even go for the castle. Go around the charity shops and just see what you can find. I have found some of the craziest things. This included, I found an Atari ST game that was actually sealed, wrapped, never opened. It went straight to Joy of Sticks. I found some crazy things there. Who keeps that, who keeps giving this stuff to them? I don't know. But it, it's there's only two charity shops, but every time I have gone, Crash Bandicoot. I found that. I found that when I was there. It's just a crazy place. It, it really is. So, um, yeah, though, I, not many pickups, but as I say, that that was awesome. Um, getting that last week, that that was awesome. And this thing, I've no idea. I've never heard of it. I thought it was interesting because it had titties on the front. Titties! But, um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome things. So, anyway. That's enough of that. So that's just the pickups. So now VR time, VR response time. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so it's time for a video response. So um, if you want to switch off here, um, unless you want to stay, are you staying? You staying? You staying? Keeping? You, take your coat off then. Stay with me. So um, you know, pull up, pull up. Have a, have a cuppa. So Matt Soulfunk Retro, good friend of mine, he uh, posed a question out there. 
Uh, it wasn't a question, he was just talking about um, letting it go. And, and, and I think, I don't know whether or not he's been watching my videos a bit and getting these really weird melodramatic, you know, titles to to videos and stuff, but it, it, I love I love ones like that. If you've got a really weird, wacky title to it, I love them. I, as you can know, you know, you can't take it with you and all that kind of stuff. For me, I love that. I latched onto it straight away. So it was basically getting at, you know, do you find it easy to let things go in your collection? Now, for me personally, it's more the games I don't have a problem with, but the consoles, ah, uh -uh, no way, don't get rid, keep them. I am a stickler for that. I've got consoles in here I ain't used probably, properly. <laughs> you know, there's like a an Amstrad. I've still got to really sit down with the CPC one that I've got to really sit down with and really check and test. I've just I've always kind of like got interested in, in other stuff like, you know, playing these and uh, finding other stuff and because it's already set up, you know. So for me, game wise, games can go, you know, whenever they please in my eyes. But I've never understood and I'm not getting at these people that do. And I know I had a chat with uh, Gross and, and uh, Soul Funk about it is when people have a focus on collecting. Um, never understood it myself. Um, I've, I've always... A lot of people do it. I hear a lot of channels saying, you know, it's time for a focus, I'm going to focus on that. And it just... That's fine, that's fine. If, I mean, and, and I'm not getting it. I'm not saying you're stupid, you're an idiot. You know, you focus on what you love. And that's fine, you know, if you want to do that, you do that. But for me, you see a lot of people where they focus on something and then they'll go, well, I've not used it. I might as well get rid of it. See, that to me is weird. I don't get that. I, You know, like, for example, I, I wouldn't think of getting rid of my Mega CD. I've not used it since Christmas, since the 12 Days of Painmas. But I wouldn't think, Christ, that's got to go because it's just there taking up space. There's just a part of me that thinks, I want to keep the hardware but I can just pick up games for it and then get rid of the games. And if I want to pick the games back up again, I'll just do it. But this goes back to what I was asking about sentimentality and what copy should be yours and how you keep on to that. So, like, those Atari ST games I was talking about, to me, that, that didn't have any emotional attachment to it. I played it again to pick it back up again. But that was a completely different thing because I, I had to let it go because... It wasn't the same feeling anymore, you know what I mean? It was a completely different feeling that was attached to that particular game. It was, and I've never, I don't feel that normally, but I must admit with them, with that one, the, uh, it was Trivia Pub Simulator. It's such a stupid game. It is, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing special. It, it was special to me because it was something that me and my dad used to play and you know, when, and a lot of things personal to me which I'm not going to get through because it's it's not anything I want to talk about. So it's, it's more about those memories I can't really get back because of things that have happened. So I can't, I can't get that memory back because of things that have happened, if you get my meaning. I don't want to go into it. But that, letting go of that is a weird, weirder feeling of actually just letting go of things in your collection. That, and I think... That's a weirder feeling for me. So, like, the fact that I thought I still had my original Atari ST, um, but my mom and dad got rid of it. I had no idea that they'd done that. And that felt like something of me had gone um, until I actually got an Atari ST again. I felt I felt complete. I felt like I got a part of my childhood again. It wasn't my one, but I, it was close as damn it that it was, and it had a lot of games that I had as a kid which was great, so it felt, it felt, it felt right, it felt like it was mine again. Anyway, I'm off topic. So, letting go, you know, I understand, I understand people that have a focus and then they go, I don't feel focused on, you know, that and I'll get rid of it, and props to you, you know, if you want to make money to buy something else in order to do that, you know, that's fine, it's, it's, it's what people need to do in order to, experience other things. For me personally, I'm really slapdash. If I see something 
that looks weird and quirky, I'll usually pick it up just for the sake of picking it up. And then I'll probably find that it was a complete crock of shit. <laughs> if it's a new memory, if it's a new memory to be made, I don't mind letting go of it. So that's game-wise. Because, I mean, this whole room, this whole room is just full of games that I've never really played. And it's true, hand on heart, a lot of them. And I, I know my show's called Dave's Nostalgia Trip, but the whole point of it is to make new nostalgia trips out, well, new nostalgia feelings out of something you've played. It's not, it's not the fact that I played it. I've played a lot of games over my years, but I think if I get it and if I love it, and I've said this before, I will keep it. If I don't like it, it's going, you know. So letting go of games, it's fine. Not a problem. Hardware, no. That is, that is the short version of my long ramble. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand people that say they have a focus, they focus on it, and then they get rid of it. I've, I've, it, it's, it sounds horrible, but it's almost like you, you're just trying to focus on that. And then when you get, you've, you've done it, you've done it, you can tick it off at list. And then it has no, it's just like, a, it's like an achievement. It's like a badge. It's a badge of honor to say, I did that. I, I ain't got it anymore, but I had that and I did that and I've moved on. You know, I'm going to stand on the shoulders of giants and I'm going to do everything. It's one of them. And, I don't know, it's, it's, I, I don't like collecting that way. I like just getting hold of things and then seeing if, you know, they're, they're, they're weird. I mean, like, okay, I can do this with Transformers than I can better with games because I've got one up here which is a really weird and wacky one. And I think I've mentioned him before, and if I can find him, I'll show him off because I couldn't let go of it because it means something to me and I couldn't let go of him in a collection. I could probably chuck all the rest away if I wanted, but there's just one. There's just one I can't get rid of. Bear with me one second. If I can find him. If I can... Sorry about that everyone. Actually I found that there's probably a couple that I'd actually keep, but this 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 is one of them I've just found off the cuff and I thought I couldn't get rid of him either. Um so yeah, this guy, I I think I've done a a review of him at one point. I don't know, I can't even remember. It was quite a while back. But here he is. This guy. Uh he's called Swindle. Uh he's from the Transformers Animated Show. And um yeah, I love him. He's great. Um, strangely enough, in the TV show, he was uh, voiced by Fred Willard, of all people. But, um, no, what I'm trying to say is, is this, this probably amounts to nothing to most people. But to me, he, he, he means a lot because I think he's a gorgeous figure. It's so ridiculous. There's nothing to him, really. He's got weird little arms. Um, and he turns into a, into, a, into a car. But it was... Uh, He's one of the uh, Stunticons? Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I love him. I think he's a great little figure and I, and I adore him. But this is what I'm saying. I have got an entire shelf of stuff like this with different Transformers on it. And none of them are a, are a focus on a particular line. They're just everything and anything. And um, to me, I would say letting go is when you've given up. I think that's probably what I'm saying. You've given up on what you like anymore. So, like, I let go of all those uh, Borrego model cars years ago, and I've never felt anything towards them since. Letting go is when, to me, that phrase, to let go of something, is when you just go, ties are severed, there's nothing else left. And thankfully, with Transformers, it's not gone yet. I still love my Transformers. Sure, a lot of the films and stuff have been shite, but I love this. Anyway, comment, like, and subscribe as you normally do. My memory card's running out, so uh, I better go because I've waffled enough. Bye!